Hello friends, this is a video lecture on aeration and agitation. What is the need of aeration and agitation? The main function of the aeration is to supply enough oxygen to the microbes in submerged culture technique for proper metabolism, while agitation provides proper mixing of the nutrients so that each and every microorganisms get proper nutrients. The part of the fermenter involved in aeration and agitation are the agitator and the aeration system. The main aim of the agitator is to provide homogeneous environment all over the fermenter. It is also used for mixing of different phases, oxygen and heat transport. A sparger is a tool used for introducing air into the fermentation medium. Three types of sparger the porous, the orific and the nozzle sparger. The porous sparger is mainly used for laboratory scale non-agitated fermenter. It is made up of sintered glass, ceramics or metals. Orific sparger In small stirred fermenter, the perforated pipes were arranged below the ampler in the form of crosses or rings approximately three quarters of the ampler diameter. Nozzle sparger. Most modern mechanically stirred fermenter designs from laboratory to industrial scale have a single open or partially closed pipe as a sparger to provide the stream of air bubbles. Ideally, the pipe should be positioned centrally below the ampler and as far as possible from it to ensure that the ampler is not flooded by the air stream. The single nozzle sparger causes a lower pressure loss than any other sparger and normally does not get blocked. Need for aeration and agitation. The majority of fermentation processes are aerobic and therefore require the provision of oxygen. If the stoichiometry of respiration is considered, then the oxygen of the glucose may be represented by this equation. Therefore, a microbial culture must be supplied with oxygen during growth at a rate sufficient to satisfy the oxygen demand. The aeration and the agitation of the fermentation medium provides necessary oxygen to the industrial fermentation process. However, the productivity of many fermentation is limited by oxygen availability. Therefore, it is important to consider the factors which affect a fermenter efficiency in supplying microbial cells with oxygen. The oxygen requirement of industrial fermentation. It has been studied that a culture demand for oxygen is very much dependent on the source of carbon in the medium. Thus, the more reduced the carbon source, the greater will be the oxygen demand. However, it is inadequate to base the provision of oxygen for fermentation simply on an estimation of overall demand because the metabolism of culture is affected by the concentration of dissolved oxygen in the broth. It may be seen that the specific oxygen uptake rate increases with the increase in the dissolved oxygen concentration up to a certain point above which no further increase in the oxygen uptake rate occurs. Thus, maximum bioproduction may be achieved by satisfying the organism's maximum specific oxygen demand by maintaining the dissolved oxygen concentration greater than the critical level. However, it must be remembered that it is frequently the objective of the fermentation technologist to produce a product of the microorganism rather than the organism itself and that the metabolic disturbance of the cell by oxygen starvation may be advantageous to the formation of a certain product. The oxygen demand of the fermentation largely depends on the concentration of the biomass and its respiratory activity which is related to the growth rate. By limiting the initial concentration of the medium, the biomass in the vessel may be kept at a reasonable level and by supplying some nutrient component as a feed, the rate of growth and hence the respiratory rate may be controlled. Oxygen supply Oxygen is normally supplied to the microbial culture in the form of air, this being the cheapest available source of the gas. The method for the provision of culture with the supply of air varies with the scale of the process. In laboratory scale, 
Cultures may be aerated by means of shake flask method. Flasks are shaken onto a platform contained in the control environment chamber. Pilot and industrial scale, air is provided to the culture by the specific type of fermenter. The rate of the oxygen transfer from the air bubbles to the liquid phase can be given by this equation and can be calculated using this equation. Determination of KLA value the first method to determine the KLA value is the sulphate oxidize, oxidation technique. This is the oldest one. Using this formula, the rate of the reaction is such that as the oxygen enters solution, it is immediately consumed in the oxidation of sulphide so that the sulphide oxidation rate is equivalent to the oxygen transfer rate. Another method of determining KLA value is the gassing out technique. There are two methods of gassing out, static method and the dynamic method. The static method of gassing out was first described by Weiss. The concentration of oxygen in the solution is decreased by passing nitrogen gas into the liquid. This will remove all the oxygen from the solution. The aeration and the agitation of the deoxygenated liquid increases the dissolved oxygen concentration which is monitored using some form of dissolved oxygen prop. This technique has the advantage over the sulphide oxidation method in that it is very rapid and may utilize the fermentation medium to which may be added dead cells or mycelium at a concentration equal to that produced during the fermentation. The dynamic method of gassing out. The procedure involves stopping the supply of air into the fermentation which results in the linear decline in the dissolved oxygen concentration due to the respiration of the culture. The aeration and the agitation of the deoxygenated liquid increased the dissolved oxygen which is monitored using some form of dissolved oxygen prop. The dynamic gassing out method has the advantage over the previous method of determining the KL value during an actual fermentation and may be used to determine the value at a different stage in the process. This technique is also rapid and only requires the use of a dissolved oxygen prop of the membrane type. The third technique is an oxygen balance technique. The oxygen balance technique is used for the determination of transportation of amount of oxygen into the fermentation medium in a given period of time. It is also used for the measurement of KLA of a fermenter. The oxygen balance technique appears to be the simplest method for the assessment of KLA and has the benefit of measuring aeration efficiency during fermentation. The sulphide oxidation and the static gassing out techniques have the disadvantage of being carried out using either a salt solution or an uninoculated sterile fermentation medium. The factors affecting the KLA value in fermentation vessels, the air flow rate employed, the degree of agitation, the rheology properties of the medium and the presence of antiform agents. The effect of air flow rate on KLA Mechanically agitated reactors, the air flow rate of 0.5 to 1.5 volume of air per volume of medium per minute is to be maintained constant on a scale-up. If the employer is unable to disperse the incoming air, then the extremely low oxygen transfer rates may be achieved. Thus, proper flow rate should be maintained by agitator. Non-mechanically agitated reactors Bubble columns and airlift reactors are not mechanically agitated. Mixing and aeration is depend on the air passage. Bubble column. Bubble column reactors cannot be used for highly viscous medium. Gas velocity should be 1 to 4 cm per second for uniform bubbles throughout the medium which will provide proper mixing. If gas velocity is higher or lower then the uniform bubbles will not be produced. Thus produces difference in the fluid density which will disturb air flow rate. Airlift fermenter. In this fermenter, the medium circulation is also accomplished with bubble formation. KL obtained in airlift fermenter will be less than the bubble fermenter due to the shorter contact between the bubble and the medium. The degree of agitation. Agitation is playing a vital role in the oxygen transfer rate in agitated fermenter. Agitation increases the area available for oxygen transfer by dispersing air into the medium.
It increases the contact time for bubbles in the medium. It prevents coalesces of the air bubbles. It decreases the thickness of liquid film at gas liquid interface. Medium rheology. Mostly the product of, of the fermentation process is not interfering with the medium fluoride or viscosity. But certain bacterial stains produces polysaccharides which increases the, increases the viscosity and hence affect the medium rheology. Thus, bacterial polysaccharides will decrease the oxygen transfer rate and bulk mixing. Antiform agent. Antiform agent collapses the form and thus increases the oxygen transfer rate of the fermentation medium. Thus, KLA value decreases due to the use of antiform agent. If any inadequate space is provided above the liquid level for form control, then abundant amount of antiform must be used to prevent loss of broth from the vessel. Thus, it is more productive to operate a fermenter at a lower working volume. This is about the aeration and agitation. Thank you.